worldwide experience that people are participating in. Uh, it's making a difference. So I, we thought we'd start with um, kind of how it all came about. Reverend Mary Bowen is one of the founders of the Association of Open We Thought, and she was in the room the day the idea came forth through some visioning. And so Mary, if you'll share with us a little bit about the genesis of this. Thank you. Where would you go? Oh, Faith, you took our hat. <laughs> been so blessed and so blessed to be here. It began as an idea, as all creation does. And uh, a group of eight ministers from various New Thought traditions had very thriving, very wonderful communities. The universal spiritual principles that we call New Thought, which are really part of the ancient wisdom that we have by every profound great teacher on the planet, had changed our lives. And our communities were thriving in many ways. And there was a realization that these were universal principles. I think it was Roger Thiel in a group one time that spoke the word, I'm no longer here to serve any specific tradition, but I serve universal principles. The universal principles of love and harmony and cooperation and oneness and peace that come from all of us. And so that's how it emerged. We got, you know, so there we are in a room. And as it always happens when you've been prayed up and you're surrendered to a bigger something that wants to emerge, Arun Gandhi was had a picnic with uh, someone uh, in our group and, and shared that he yearned, but he didn't have the facilities, he didn't know how to do it, to bring forth the teachings of his grandfather, Muhammad. So just remember, this is 12, 13 years ago. And these principles now permeate. You can't pick up a magazine and refer to Gandhi and King and now Chavez. And so Barbara Fields, I think, is the one that heard that. And someone else, just as the way Spirit prompts it, but this is the going to be the 30th anniversary of the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. What amazing synchronicity. And I don't know who did the finger count and went 64 days. 64 days to plant the universal principles of peace. What we knew was that as a spiritual-based communities, we were never going to take Jesus and Buddha into our schools, our workplace, into our governance, into science. But you know how they just love the people who practice. Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr. So out of that, nine months later, with the intention of serving the awakening on the planet, we were at the United Nations, by the country of India. That's how fast the bad idea spreads. It's amazed us. Because one of the things about <coughs> this program, this idea that emerged was this idea of an omnilocal model. That the core idea, the, the idea of peace and awakened world, the practices of IMSA, the reason we call it nonviolence in, in English is we don't have a really good word for ahimsa, which is the sacred practice that arises from oneness and the sacredness of life. And so as this emerged, it just took off. And the omni-local model is we hold the principles and the idea as it's sent out. And then groups take the idea and create their own unique, amazing expression of it. So you're going to hear today just an ice tip of the iceberg of the tens of thousands of programs and initiatives that have resulted from the launching of the Gandhi King and now the Gandhi King Chavez, Caesar Chavez, taking the principles of his teacher, Martin Luther King Jr., and taking it to California to the uh, farm labor movement. So it's just evolved and evolved from that.